Mm-hmm. So in other words, the point is, uh, is Shakespeare just a dirty old man? <laughs> there is that possibility. Of course, some people can think that if they want to. But I wouldn't think so, because I want, you will see gradually how the man is just an oceanic, um, he, he's just uh, the, the ocean. I mean, he's, uh, he, uh, he's just endless. Uh, he, he, he see the complexity of this so that you can see it is not a, a mere matter of being a, a filthy-minded person. Now, so I have, therefore, to plunge further. So your quondam wife, which the Latin form of wife, pan on the condom, uh, but look what uh, pan there is here. Um, you see QU, um, QU in Elizabethan uh, pronunciation was simply K. So it would be, it won't be quondam, it would be condom wife. Uh, there is a massive book uh, by an American scholar, call, a woman scholar, called Helga Kökeritz. Uh, was published uh, uh, 40 years ago. And uh, uh, about Shakespeare's pronunciation and the problems of Shakespeare's pronunciation. In other words, you can take that book and prove that quondam could be pronounced as K, condom. Now, therefore, the QU is a K, and what we have here is I'm sorry about this, but <laughs> uh, this is con is the French slang for um, uh, the female genitals. And uh, in French, this is so common, so ordinary, uh, it is so, I mean, like in English parlance nowadays, uh, everybody has all these four letter words. I mean, it's very usual. Uh, it has transcended its sexual meaning, it can be used for anything. You say, oh, it's con. He, oh, you know, the, the soup I ate is con. You know, the glasses I'm wearing is con, you know. Of course, it's a pejorative. It just means, you know, uh, so it is, okay, that. But then see what Shakespeare is planning on. Damn. So your wife is a damn con. You see how he's reversing it. <laughs> but uh, wait for this complexity. In swear, it is absolutely amazing. In swear, there's the word wear. <laughs> so your damn home wife wears the Venus glove. Now, don't get confused by this, because there's no doubt that all Shakespearean sexual imagery is for both sexes. Now, this is another very long story. Um, yeah. Well, uh, because, uh, well, there, there are many inter- possible interpretations of this. Uh, was, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to say, actually. Okay, uh, so, so uh, Shakespeare's imagery uh, referred to both uh, sexes. And uh, you see, in, in his own time, the medical opinion was such. This is very old, comes from the Greeks via Galen, Galen, if you want to know. And um, therefore, uh, uh, in, in Elizabethan times, uh, the medical opinion was that uh, the male and female sexual organs are practically the same. Just one turns inwards, the other one ter- turns outwards. And uh, there's a kind of Another hilarious thing is, in the medical books, uh, the uh, male sexual organ re- is referred to as, I don't know if you know this, yard, the yard, the measuring yard. So it's very funny. Don't, uh, <laughs> it's hilariously funny. So <laughs> All right. So there's a 1542 uh, medical book called The, Questionne- the Questionary of also, the pronunciation is very changed. Yeah, I sometimes have great fun in uh, telling you the original uh, pronunciation, but this is uh, uh, chirurgien. Again, the French was a very great influence. And he says, the questionary of chirurgien. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So of the chirurgians or the surgeons. Yeah, the questionary of the surgeons. <laughs> so it uh, talks of it says this, it is the shape of the instrument 
of generation, <coughs> of generation in other words, of men, for it is proportionally made to the yard, the penis, and codes of manes genitures. The cods are the testicles of the male genitalia. Except that he's, he's, uh, he's telling you about uh, women. Except that it is reversed and is hollow within for to receive manes yard in the time of copulation for the neck of the matrice is look like a ma for the neck of the matrice is like a manes yard and the matrice the womb in other words within <coughs> is like codes or purse of the genitals of men and as men have two bollocks or stones that pass and appear outwards so have women inward except that they be bigger which is bigger in the man than in the woman and in men they are long with long wise and round and in women they be round and flat and are set on both the sides of the mattress on a side and even so as the vessels the spermaticus been in the midst of the bollocks outward so be they inward in women <laughs> you know as he's saying the women's ovaries are the bollocks of men <laughs> and their yard just turned inwards <laughs> so um, another 16 or 5 <laughs> medical book by uh, 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 by a sort of German sounding chap Christopher Wirzung says the privities of women make outwardly a small show but within are much like to the privy members of a man the neck of the mother or womb so when Saddam Hussein says the mother of all battles <laughs> I don't know what he thinks he's saying but mother in Shakespeare sometimes is referenced it comes from the Greek to the womb so the mother or womb is instead of the yard. The mother or womb is compared with the cods, where on the neck of the same, like as is said, the stones are fixed. The stones, the testicles. So that with good reason may be said that whatsoever men have outwardly, the same have women inwardly. But for honesty's sake, we will write no further of it. <laughs> Suddenly he becomes Christian. So, <laughs> um, so again, this is another one from uh, Helkia Krug, probably he was a, a, a Jew, in 1615. Again, the neck of the womb, said he, is instead of the yard, for they are both of a length, and by friction and refriction, the seed is called out of the like parts into the same passage, only they differ in situation which is outward in men, inward in women. This explains to you why Shakespeare has sometimes, frequently, often, actually, uh, the same words used for both sexual organs. So therefore, uh, uh, this is what, uh, finally, I'll show you the complexity of this. You're therefore damn in the French sense, con wife, your whore wife, in other words, and she was the great whore of ancient times. Look at this, wears still the condom. Now this again is very, very complex. Uh, you can build up on this. <laughs> He's saying, therefore, your wife, who is a damn whore anyway, is delighted uh, to wear condoms all the time because, you know, she wouldn't want uh, any children or whatever. She, in other words, here also you have one of the first indications of the philosophy of sex for fun rather than Christian procreation. But uh, there's also the problem that, uh, therefore, that uh, remember that the Elizabethan uh, women were played by young boys, by young men. Therefore, remember that Helen of Troy is also a boy who is wearing, therefore, the condom. It's very, very complex. 
And I think before <laughs> I progress further. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, you see that there is more to it. And then, of course, the wife swears. You see, this is again a very important element of Elizabethan sexuality. She is a swearing wife, just like today. The younger generation <laughs> swearing non-stop. They think it's sexy. Uh, of course, the, the implication is a swearing wife is sexy because she's like a whore. And uh, simultaneously, however, uh, she's also a damn whore. Uh, again, it shows Shakespeare's ambiguity to human sexuality. In other words, it's great fun, fantastic, but as a Christian, it is wrong, immoral, etc. All these incredible contradictions are all in this one sentence from Proilus and Presida. And this is an indication to you of how complex is this problem. Now, uh, what happened is that this book, Shakespeare's Body, by Partridge. Partridge was an American, and uh, he was a linguist. When he published this book, I'll tell you the exact date, when it was first published in 1947, as early as 1947, so please remember, therefore, Shakespeare's sexual imagery already is understood very early on by English critics, Dr. Johnson, etc. Uh, and so until Partridge, no one had really brought it together. Now this is, even the title has a pun in it, Shakespeare's body, in other words, Shakespeare's obscenities, but also it's a pun on the body, the body white. So when, in 1947, this was published, for a very long time, almost 10 years, it was sold under the counters as a porno, pornographic material. It is only recently that it is published, and you know, even now, probably from the bookshops, you have to order it rather than <laughs> take it from the shelf. So uh, it's hilarious because the most recent, I. Uh, I, have, I couldn't bring all the three volumes of this. There's a gentleman here uh, called Gordon Williams. Uh, this is uh, a dictionary of sexual language and imagery in Shakespearean and Stuart literature. This is massive three volumes. And uh, uh, it is an American edition, 1994. Give it another two years until it comes on, on the market. So it's quite, therefore it's very recent. Still, very few people know about it, uh, if at all. <laughs> it cost me 350 pounds, <laughs> uh, just uh, this lecture, for this lecture. So, to show it to you. Uh, so, what happens is this, I mean, this uh, uh, gentleman uh, uh, viciously attacks Partridge, that uh, gentleman, uh, which is remarkable, because obviously he is part of the uh, establishment Shakespeare uh, scholarship. And uh, there isn't even a dust jacket to know where is he, what, who is he. He's obviously Welsh. So, um, <laughs> so therefore, this uh, chap uh, is completely unwarranted, viciously attacking uh, Partridge, because Partridge is a source of him, uh, which is very unkind. And in other words, I want also to show you that uh, uh, this is no more than really a glorified Partridge dictionary. Uh, but to um, uh, uh, further sort of call you, show you how these things work, one of the great, greatest monuments of human culture really is the Oxford English Dictionary, the massive Oxford English Dictionary, which uh, always is updated. It is, you know, 20, 30 volumes. And it records every English word and its first occurrence in the language, then, of course, many other examples. So, in the end, all these people are really plundering the Oxford English Dictionary. So, in other words, um, there's no mystery about this. You can do your own research and uh, look up the o Oxford English Dictionary. So, this is a compilation <coughs> of Shakespeare's sexual imagery from, in a sense, the Oxford English Dictionary and other sources. There are some dictionaries of slang, etc. So now, um, you see, <laughs> uh, 
Um, just to give you a taste of this, uh, it is incredible how uh, see, we think, especially with modern technology and so on, we know all about uh, human sexuality, let alone everything else. But what uh, we occasionally do not appreciate is, frankly, we still know nothing about it. Sexuality is still one of the greatest mysteries uh, to be conquered. I mean, imagine if, say, uh, uh, of whatever gender, uh, you see uh, there uh, someone who you suddenly sexually desire for a man, and uh, then it suddenly uh, uh, comes up. So, I mean, what is it which transfers from that <coughs> object there to you through hot air? And something happens to you, and something comes up. So, in other words, e erection was one of the greatest mysteries of mankind. Although we know a lot about it now, but uh, there's a lot we don't know. What is very interesting is that, uh, although now we know that uh, erection, especially for the male, happens in terms of the blood supply suddenly pouring into uh, the genitals, into the penis. Uh, and this is why the poor people who use Viagra get a heart attack and, uh, <laughs> and collapse before doing anything because the blood suddenly rushes there and they are too old to survive it. I mean, <laughs> Viagra, it is a criminal act to, to, to have that, that pill on the market and what him for saying, I have no doubt that our governments are in the plot, it is a conspiracy to bump off the old people. <laughs> And they say, this is so that you do not, so that you do not think I'm exaggerating. It is hilarious that there was a news item. There was a news item in Argentina. The government, out of its kindness and the NHS service and so on, uh, unlike in our civilized country, they prescribe, they allow the medicine to be prescribed free of charge to all the old people. And the old people gang up, collect signatures saying this is a government prop, the government conspiracy to kill us all. We don't want it. You know, it's just incredible. I mean, it, our lives are so incredibly uh, funny and, and ridiculous. We accept so much nonsense. I mean, very long story, I mean, the medical industry, the, the, the tablets we take, everybody takes Prozac and so on. I mean, every medicine, by definition, is poison. And we're <laughs> pumping poison into people. And this is uh, still, never mind genetic food, never mind uh, the ripoff of uh, the uh, companies, etc. Sorry, it's just, uh, it is very depressing. But, uh, but uh, see how, so, I was trying to tell you that human sexuality is still a great mystery. We may have the technology uh, in the future of doing funny things with it, but uh, the philosophical, psychological, every other aspect of it, I'm afraid, will probably remain mystery. And people do the funniest things when it comes to sex. And <laughs> uh, I mean, like, probably you wouldn't, all right. I see, for a very long time, I was very uh, uh, puzzled by one of Shakespeare's uh, themes. One of the themes is there's always this reference to fish. And uh, there seems to be undoubtedly uh, some sexual uh, pun there. And for example, when uh, King Lear, uh, Kent, uh, one of the, uh, Kent is an aristocrat, one of Lear's close aristocrats, who then takes Cordelia's side and King Lear banishes him, etc. He returns disguised uh, as a kind of manservant. And when uh, King Lear doesn't recognize him, and when he says, what do you do? He says, I can do this, I can do that, uh, to prove that he can be a good servant. And then he says, I do not eat fish. <laughs> and, uh, I still don't know what exactly it means. I think it means that uh, he uh, is not uh, interested in women, he's not heterosexual, uh, and that uh, fish there probably means that he uh, doesn't have coitus with uh, women. 
However, I mean, this yeah. is an interesting enlightenment here. Anchovy, under this <laughs> massive <laughs> picture. <here. laughs> Look, anchovy. Yeah? Mm. Aubrey, this is an Elizabeth, post Elizabethan, but very near it writer you would all know because at one point there was a West End play about him, mm. Aubrey, yeah? Very good. Yeah, refers to a confessional question formulated by Bishop Burkhard of Worms, a uh, funny name, of course in German it would be, it would be Worm, uh, that's, mm. he died 1025, <laughs> very funny chap, he was a monk, he wrote a whole uh, book on uh, on uh, uh, things sexual which people shouldn't do and therefore <laughs> must beware if they don't want to be punished. It is an incredible, it's something like 300 uh, little paragraphs of the most bizarre sexual <laughs> practices you can imagine. 